video isn't clickbait, it's perfectly legal, and no RF was harmed in the making of this video. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, we are going to talk about sending encrypted WinLink messages, but we're not going to be doing it over RF. So please save the comments until you hear me out on why I think this is important, and I show you guys exactly how it works. So one of the primary issues with email and trying to keep email secure is the fact that your email lives on a server owned by someone else. And that server can be compromised. It can uh, have a warrant in, here in the US. A warrant can be presented to the company that maintains that server where they would have to give up all of your data. Now, there are some services out there like ProtonMail that supposedly keep things encrypted so that that's not possible. But I'm just a little untrusting of that type of service uh, for certain types of data. And if you take a look around at current world events, you can kind of figure out why this might be important to someone. And by utilizing WinLink in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion, we completely eliminate our email ever hitting the server. And because we're doing this over the internet and we're not using RF, encrypting this type of message is perfectly legal. So while we won't be using ham radio per se today, we will be using ham radio applications in Pat Menu and Pat Winlink. So let's go ahead and jump over to the Raspberry Pi and let me show you guys a few things. So one of the things you can install with Build-A-Pi uh, is this security option. And you'll find that if you run uh, Build-A-Pi the first time or if you run the update tool, it's on the last page under Utilities. And you'll see this right here where it says Security. And you see that I have this installed. So let's go ahead and exit out of the Build-A-Pi update. And I'm just going to open a terminal window. In the terminal window, I'm going to type Secure text and go ahead and hit return. Give this just a couple of seconds and this application will open up. Now a real quick explanation of this uh, application. You put your password in up here at the top. You choose the encryption algorithm that you want to use and then you type your text right here in this window. So I'm going to go ahead and type something in here. After you have your message typed in here, you just go ahead and click encrypt. At this point, you simply copy this data right here and paste that into the body of your email. Now, you do have to make sure that the receiver of the email does have the password that you used. Otherwise, they will not be able to encrypt it. When they receive uh, your message, they will paste the encrypted uh, information into the bottom box. They'll type in the password and they'll click decrypt and they would see the same text that I typed in here. So a peer-to-peer -peer connection over the internet is extremely similar to doing it inside your local area network where, you're, where you have two Raspberry Pis connected to the same wireless or wired network. There is one major difference that's going to come into play and that is called port forwarding. Now, I can't walk you through how to do this on your particular router. I am going to go ahead and show you my router and the way I set this up. But if you're unfamiliar with port forwarding, just do a Google search for your router's name and port forwarding, and you should come up with the information to show you how to do this. And the port you need to forward is 8774 to the Raspberry Pi that's going to be running the WinLink server. So right here on my router, you can see the WinLink port forward that I have set up. And I have it sending uh, port 8773, 774, and 775 to this device here. And this 891 is the Raspberry Pi that I've got connected directly to my router. And what this does is any traffic that is received over port 8774 gets forwarded directly to my Raspberry Pi. 
and this is the critical step to get this to working is making sure that your port forward is working if something's not working chances are it's because your port forward is not done correctly so you may have to play with that and i wish i could give you guys a full tutorial on this unfortunately it changes with every single router that is out there so you're gonna have to do your own homework and figure out how to accomplish port forwarding on your router now, the next piece of information that you're going to need to know is your public IP address. And it's very simple to get your public IP address. You just navigate to a website called whatsmyip.org. And don't worry, this is not my public IP address. I'm running a VPN service so that I can uh, show you this page without giving up my actual IP address. But you will need this information here. Now, I do want to mention one other service here called noip.com. And what noip.com does is it allows you to create a name that's easy to remember and point that name to your public IP address. So when you're handing out the information to other people that they need to connect to your WinLeak station, it's easier to give them a name uh, to, for them to remember than it is to try to give them an IP address. Now, this is an optional step, and you can work with just the IP address if you need to or you prefer to. Now, let's go ahead and get this set up and configured on the Raspberry Pi. In Pat Menu, just like we did in last week's video, you want to come down to Manage Pat Winlink. You want to come right here to this button, Add P2P Alias. And you would put the station's call sign that you wanted to connect with. Now, I'm going to be showing you a demo here in just a minute where I have another operator connect to my station to pass traffic. So, assuming I want to connect with his station, I would simply enter KF7VUT, since that is Tim's call sign, and I would need to put his public IP address. I'm going to have to get that information from him. So let's just assume that it was uh, 14.123.45.67. We'll just make something up for this. Uh, now I would be ready to go ahead and update this and create a peer-to-peer -peer alias. And I'll show you guys that alias here in just a second. The other thing you want to do is you want to make sure that we set the listen mode on both Raspberry Pis. So you just click set listen mode. You put a check mark beside Telnet. You can see that I'm already currently listening on Telnet. But you put a check mark beside Telnet and you go ahead and click set listen mode. Okay, so now that you've exchanged information with the other person that you want to exchange an email with and you've set up your peer-to-peer -peer alias you want to go ahead and open up your pat mailbox and we'll go ahead and click action and connect and right here under the alias we should see that alias that we set up so i just clicked on it and it populates all of this information that we need right here now if for some chance you don't see your alias when you click right here go ahead and refresh your browser window and then it should appear. So if I wanted to make a peer-to-peer -peer connection with Tim, I would go ahead and uh, using this information, click connect. Now, obviously this isn't going to work because I used fictitious information here. But I do have Tim on the phone and we're going to run through a quick demo here. Now, for time's sake and not to bore you, we didn't do the encryption and the decryption during this demo, but you definitely could send your encrypted traffic using this method. Let's go ahead and check out the demo. All right, so Tim, go ahead and initiate a connection to my station. And guys, what you should see happening as he makes this connection is once he connects, it should pick up the message that I've got for him in my inbox and send it to him and grab the one in his uh, outbox and send it to me. Uh, so, Tim, I'm seeing your message that just came through on my side. Are you seeing my message on your side? 
Yep, got your message on my side. Perfect. That is exactly what we wanted. So there's how you can pass encrypted WinLink messages. This avoids your email ever hitting a server that could possibly be compromised. Now, which encryption you want to use, I'll let you guys do the research and figure out which is best for your particular use case. Personally, if I'm going to do this, I would typically use AES-256 encryption. I think that's good enough. Others, however, may disagree with me. In that case, use your favorite encryption method. Guys, I hope you found this information helpful. And if you would, give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.